Joining me now is Mrs. Martha Washington. Good afternoon, Mrs. Washington. Good day, mistress. How is life at Mount Vernon? Oh, indeed, we thrive. We are newly arrived to the plantation, and in truth, I never thought I would be so very far from my own home in New Kent County. But I have learned through the greater part of experience that our happiness or our misery depends not upon our circumstances, but upon our dispositions. We will carry the seeds of the one or the other about with us in our minds wherever we go. And I am ever desirous to be possessed of a cheerful and pleasant mind in whatever situation I may be indeed. Since we have been at Mount Vernon, you can imagine to have a war hero as a stepfather for my children is quite a fine thing indeed. And in truth, I think if I did not remind my Jackie and my Patsy of their dearly departed father, Mr. Custis, they would never know the difference. Mm -hmm. We have many email questions from students around the country. We'll begin our discussion right now with an email question from Mrs. Hammond's seventh grade class at Shawnee Middle School in Shawnee, Oklahoma. As a young girl, what sort of things did you do when you were not in school, Mrs. Washington? Oh, indeed. I suppose much of my education occurred throughout the day, but I have always delighted in gardening, horseback riding when I were of an age to do so, reading out, and I, well, I am the oldest of eight, and so I have a number of sisters and brothers, and we always had our minds upon one thing or the other, and my cousins lived across the river, so there were quite a number of us. Many playmates. Indeed, yes. absolutely. Well, Mrs. Morales's third grade class at the Buckley School in New York would like to know, where did you meet George Washington? Oh, I suppose I had known Mr. Washington for quite a number of years by the very nature of his reputation, that of a dashing young war hero. But it is my neighbor, Colonel Chamberlain, who formally reintroduced us at his home uh, in the mid of March of 58. And, well, I will give over that after that meeting, Mr. Washington paid two calls upon me at my own plantation. And then in June, some months later, as I was writing to my factor in London, I asked him to include sundry items for a bride. <laughs> <laughs> a momentous meeting, wasn't it? Indeed yes. It was. Well, we have a question now from our audience here in the studio. Who would like to ask a first question of Mrs. Washington? Yes, uh, this young man in the back, if you'll wait just a moment for the microphone. What's your name and what's your question? My name is Jason. Um, how did you feel when Daniel Custis died? Well, indeed, it is a very excellent query that you make. My husband passed so very suddenly. He had not always had the finest of health, but that spring, that summer, I had seen him in the best health I had seen in all years of our marriage. But within three days, he were taken from me. I suppose it is a great thing to lose not only a husband, but two children, very close to one another. There were a great burden of the properties put upon me. It is not that ladies cannot manage plantations, it is just that it is a gentleman's sphere. And to place both spheres upon one person's shoulders, both a man's sphere and a woman's sphere, is not anything I would wish upon anyone. But indeed, I had a great number of friends and family who did assist me. We have another question. Mrs. Festy's fifth grade class from Witt Intermediate School in West Hartford, Connecticut asks, did your children go to school when they moved to Mount Vernon? Oh, well, they were educated, mind you. Uh, my son, we uh, have hired a tutor for him. Though he is not as diligent as I would care for him, he does delight in that of the sport and leisure. I have a notion that when my daughter sets a finer hand upon the slate than my son, he will become more diligent very quickly. Uh, they do have that of music masters, uh, that of um, uh, those tutors which ren educate children in things that render them more loving and um, useful to their company. And I do look to their letters, their numbers, their catechism, and certainly my daughter's housewifery duties, instructing her in the same. How about another question from the students in our audience? How about this young lady right down front? What's your name um, and what's your question? My name is Amy and my question is how old were you when your first child was born? Oh, I was just that of nigh 20 years of age. My first child was a son, 
and named for his father, Daniel Park Custis. Mrs. Silva's fourth grade class at Indian Hills Elementary School in Manomet, Massachusetts wants to know, what kinds of games do your children like playing? Oh, indeed, there are quite a number of them. They delight in blind man's bluff, thread the needle, uh, cricket, um, kite flying. There's all matter of games of chase and the like, uh, hoop rolling, um, riddling out, uh, singing out. There are a good number of entertainments. Another question from our audience. We have a lot of good questions in our audience today. What about this young lady right down here? If you'll just wait for the microphone to come and, and tell us your name and your question. My name is Sophia and I was wondering how would you feel if one of your kids suddenly had a job in education? Had a, 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 job, a job in, in education. education. How would you feel if oh. one of your children were a teacher, for example? Well, indeed, it is not quite the calling for a lady. Um, and, and certainly my son is also born to a uh, better... Um, uh, well, I should put it this way. The Custis lands are very vast indeed. There is nigh 20,000 acres. Uh, several plantations spread out within seven different counties. And my children will inherit each a third. Uh, Mr. Washington looks over to them and so my son, I hope, will look to his plantations and serve his king and country in the Burgesses. And my daughter, I hope she will marry well and be the mistress of her household. That would please me most. Right. Another question from our audience today. How about this young man in the second row? The microphone's on its way. What is your name and what is your question? My name's Dan and um, I was wondering, was your parents strict? Were my parents strict? I suppose no stricter than any others. Indeed, we were allowed freedoms um, to run about that to the plantation. But mind, when I turned 10, that is nigh the age that a young lady must turn to the duties of her housewifery duties and learning out to be like her mama, and a, and a young boy should uh, look to the duties much as his papa. So before I was 10, I would say I had greater freedoms and afterwards I had more responsibilities, as is befitting. All right, another email question. Mrs. Speed's fifth grade class at Juniper Elementary School has a question for, her, for you, and the question would be, um, do you own slaves, and what are their jobs? Oh, well, naturally, I have a good number of people. Uh, I dare say the Custis property is nigh 300 people, but again, oh, only 200 are there at our primary residence of, of White House in New Kent. Naturally, I could not bring all of those people with me to Mount Vernon. It is a much smaller home. And uh, so I have brought 15 of my household and their families, and nigh 50 people in total. And that includes waiters, uh, tradesmen such as carpenters and tanners, as well as my immediate household staff, my own maid, my children's servants, and uh, a girl who saw, sews for them, Rose, my cook doll, uh, Mima, Jenny, that of the scullery maiden, the laundress, um, there is a good number that I have brought with me. One cannot manage a plantation uh, without the assistance of, of one's people. You managed it yourself. That's quite remarkable, Mrs. Washington.